I got a tingle in, so I knew something was happening. Uh, it was 55 minutes, I was beginning to get an erection, but they said an hour, so I waited the hour. <laughs> yeah, like, watching. Yeah, like, uh, I think it's like 10, 9, 8, 7, <laughs> and then uh, we made love very successfully. But there are many more lifestyle prescription drugs that it's claimed can change lives for the better. There's a pill if you want to lose weight, one for restoring hair loss, another for countering depression, a pill to overcome shyness, and even one that promises immortality. So lifestyle drugs are the rage for young and old alike, and that means it's boom time for the pharmaceutical industry. The industry is worth about $308 billion worldwide, and it's growing at about 6% a year. Um, but Pfizer, which launched Viagra earlier this year, has seen its profits go up about 146% in the third quarter compared to last year when it hadn't launched the drug. So there's a huge potential for this sort of lifestyle drug. This has been one of the most productive decades in drug research uh, that we've seen in the century. And the genomic revolution will give even more of that uh, uh, potential. And certainly the, uh, the revenues that those drugs earn are important in funding the kind of research we do. It takes about $500 million to bring a drug to the market. And so one has to earn a considerable amount of revenue to actually do that consistently and over many different fields. Surrounding the publicity that the manufacturers Pfizer have enjoyed since the launch of Viagra has been an argument about who should pay for the so-called lifestyle drugs, the patient or the state. My patients that present with erectile dysfunction are often very perturbed by this. You know, it not only affects them, it affects their partner, their ability to form relationships. These are very unhappy people. Sure, there's a cost of five or six pounds uh, per tablet associated with Viagra, but I think that's the cost that society has to bear. I don't think that people should just have to buy the tablets for themselves because that means that the rich people will get the treatment and the poor people won't get the treatment. You know, I think that the way forward is for these drugs to be supported by the healthcare systems in whichever country that, uh, where the patients are. There's increasing fascination with all lifestyle drugs, not just Viagra. But while those like Tony and Kath Wilkinson have seen the benefits, they're also aware of the possible risks. There's still that little niggle in the back of your mind that it's, it's a drug and it's in your system. And yeah, using uh, it for a long purpose. Long periods of time. I don't Nobody's, I haven't heard of a, a study on that, of using it for a long time. Uh, I've only used six tablets. Up to now. That's in, what, nine months? There's enormous under-reporting of adverse effects. Only about 10% of the adverse effects that occur are reported to the Medicines Control Agency, and in other countries it's uh, often less than that. And uh, we really need to improve that. Since Viagra went on the market in America, 69 men are reported to have died after taking it. Most of the deaths were linked to heart attacks and related medical conditions. The labelling of Viagra has since been revised to warn patients that they should undergo a thorough medical examination beforehand. Pfizer, though, says there's no cause for concern. We've had cardiologists work with us from the very beginning of this program, uh, evaluating this drug with us. We are in constant communication with regulatory authorities, uh, both in Europe and at the FDA, and these are evaluated. And it's not simply a matter of the reports, it's a matter of whether or not there is a pattern there that makes one suspicious. If, if we had problems with the drug, we would admit it. The demand for lifestyle drugs may be seen by some as nothing more than vanity at work, but the Wilkinsons argue there's a far more serious side to it all. Since the drugs have come out that helped me to get an erection, it's brought us close, it's made us more happy, it's got us back nearly to how I was, to the accident. So. Like, our love life, I'll we'll always sort of have the little clinical side to it now, but at least we've, at we've least still we've got, got each it. other. Yeah. <laughs> We're a happy we couple again. So Viagra has opened a brave new...